Happy Halloween. Last year I made a video talking about a classic horror manga by the name of Demon Lord Dante. For those of you that haven't seen that video yet, I will pin the link to the video in the comment section below. Now we continue Demon Lord Dante. Rio finally returns home and understandably, the boy is traumatized. The moment he gets home, he just sits up in his bed looking like a possessed kid from one of those exorcist movies. The next day, Rio and his sister Sayori walk into school together, only to find the students panicking. In the science room, they find someone's been torn to pieces and killed. Some of the students are thinking that a bear just pulled up and had himself a snack, but Rio already knew what the deal was. The devil. At this point, Rio's stressing. He's sitting in his room at home, realizing that he's of the same species of whatever creature that painted the science room red. But he's in denial. Desperately trying to convince himself that he is in fact a human being. He couldn't convince himself because he suddenly senses a power level nearby and shoots out of his window like a bullet, landing miles away from his house, only to find a demon tearing some dude's lungs out. Rio transforms, but it isn't into that giant monstrosity that took out the military. It's a humanoid devil form, kinda like Tekken. He blitzes and one shots the demon, both tearing its arm off and cutting it in half in a single moment. Meanwhile, we have a biker gang driving and drinking in the middle of the night. You know, degenerate activity. They spot a woman walking alone and decide to do unspeakable things to her without her consent. After they tear her clothes off, she just transforms into this creature of sorts. Furry legs, scaly body, long squiggly hair. You already know what's about to happen. They all start running, her hairs are stretching out, snatching them up and turning them into stone, leaving them to shatter apart and die. You already know who this is, but I ain't saying it until she does. Rio is back to having nightmares. His dreams are being invaded by Zenon, begging him to create a demon army to kill God. Again, Rio rejects his demonhood, and the next morning, the Utsugi family are all having breakfast. Sayori is reading the newspaper and finds a report of frozen corpses broken into pieces in the middle of the road. You already know what that's about. Rio's dad takes the newspaper. He's sweating because he already knows what it is. So while Rio is on his way to school, he is approached by Oshiba. You know, the samurai priest demon hunter from the previous video. Turns out, he has a kendo club in the school. All of a sudden, he starts talking to Rio about demons. Just brings it up out of nowhere. So Rio plays dumb, acting like demons couldn't possibly exist. So Oshiba debunks him by inviting him to his dojo. You see, Oshiba believes that Ryo is closer to God than any other because Ryo's father is a leader of the Demon Hunter Super Priest organization. So Oshiba wants to indoctrinate Ryo into the cause. Just come to the dojo, bro. I'm gonna show you something cool. Proceeds to show him some random citizen getting his ass beat by wooden swords without protective gear to inflict maximum damage upon his body. They're torturing this man. Understandably, Ryo is confused. Oshiba tells Ryo that they've been watching him for a while. They believe he's a demon hiding in human form. He theorized that demons can disguise themselves as humans. So to prove it, he just cracks the man over the skull with a wooden sword, causing him to revert back into his demon form. He was right. So the ass beating continues. Oshiba grabs a pocket knife and carves the demon to death. Ryo feels sympathetic towards the demon and leaves the dojo, only to be approached by the woman that wasted that entire biker gang the night before. She refers to him as Dante, which immediately gets his attention. She introduces herself as Medusa, which was obvious, and draws out the dormant memories of his forgotten past. One million years ago, Earth was inhabited by a peaceful race known as humans. Their peace seems to have allowed them to advance their technology up to futuristic proportions. They have flying cars. In the depths of space, there exists this large mass of energy. This mass of energy wasn't like the sun at all. It had sentience. Its name was God. God pulls up to Earth and launches an attack against a futuristic city known as Sodom. Energy beams and fireballs everywhere, just mass destruction brought about by unthinkable telekinetic power. In this time period, Dante and Medusa were both human beings. God introduces himself to the people of Sodom. He reveals to the humans that he lacks a physical form and wishes to harvest himself inside all of their bodies, possessing them all. He destroyed their city as a display of power, killing millions. Obviously the humans don't like this, so God says bet. He just summons these God creatures. We got humanoid horses on fire, humanoid fire dogs, 
humanoid fire pigs, just a bunch of giant animal people. It's kind of nightmare fuel, honestly. The humans are getting burnt alive, torn apart, chopped up, all sorts of terrible things. You want to know the worst part? None of them are dying. The creatures are somehow keeping them alive so they can just keep torturing them. Dante and Medusa flee the city, retrieving his jet that specializes in hunting dinosaurs. This world has dinosaurs. It's a one-man jet, so Rio goes alone, only to be attacked by a pterodactyl. Not gonna lie, the pterodactyl thought he was gonna eat swell, but he wasn't. The T-Rex behind him, however, was, cause he just bites down on that flying fuck, having him crying out, screaming out in pain, he was about to eat swell, now he's being eaten swell. Unfortunately, Medusa is spotted by a giant animal god creature and is burnt alive. This is where things get crazy. The monster launches a fireball at Dante's ship, burning him alive with the two dinosaurs. Now this time, the monsters actually meant to kill Dante and Medusa. They didn't plan to torture them like the others. They intended to destroy them, and yet, the two were still alive. Their rage allowed them to absorb God's energy, using it to become demons. Dante obtained his monstrous form by fusing with the aircraft that was equipped with futuristic weaponry as well as absorbing the two dinosaurs into his body. The rest of the humans in the city of Saddam did the same thing, transforming themselves into demons. There was another human city known as Gomorrah. God didn't want the humans absorbing his power and transforming into demons, so he just flooded the entire city with non-stop rain. Giant tidal waves were knocking over buildings while the humans of Saddam became demons that lived on. The humans of the city of Gomorrah were wiped out, with very few survivors remaining. Those survivors created a cult, and their descendants are the devil worshippers that would resurrect Dante in the modern age. Devils are the original humans. If so, what are the humans in the modern era? It turns out God decided to possess apes instead, forcing them to rapidly evolve into humans, granting God the vessels he desired. Human souls are pieces of himself divided amongst the entirety of mankind. Rio regains his memory. Dante's soul entered the body of Rio as a newborn baby. It was fate that led his soul to the Himalayas to merge with Dante's body, making both body and soul whole again. It is this revelation that causes Rio to embrace his true identity as Dante and build a devil army to kill God. The end. This manga is incomplete, but would morph into something great. Toei Animation wanted to make an anime adaptation of Gonagai's Demon Lord Dante. Unfortunately, Toei wanted the anime to cater to children, so they needed for Gonagai to heavily alter the story and like, get rid of all the, you know, crazy religious stuff, if you will. As a result, the anime Toei Animation would create would be a heavily altered version of Demon Lord Dante and would result in the creation of an entirely new franchise by the name of Devilman.